In the golden era of cinema, one actress stood out with remarkable talent and unwavering dedication to her craft. Her performances were authentic, carrying a depth of emotions that connected with audiences and earned praise from both viewers and critics. This exceptional artist had a unique ability to subtly express a range of feelings, making her a beloved figure in the industry. Her influence extends beyond her time, leaving an everlasting impact on generations of filmmakers and actors. Celebrated for her timeless contributions to the art of storytelling, she portrayed diverse characters and pushed the boundaries of cinema. This classic star's work continues to resonate, shaping the world of film in profound ways. Share your cherished memories or personal experiences related to this iconic figure in the comments below. And stay tuned for interesting anecdotes about her in the upcoming segments. Keep watching this video to learn more. Born in Springfield, Ohio, Lillian Jish's upbringing was marked by constant movement due to family financial strains after their father's departure. Despite these challenges, she and her sister were encouraged by their mother to pursue acting, seeing it as a potential path to stability. Starting on stage at five years old, her early performances paved the way for her entry into the world of film. Notably, she caught the eye of famed director D.W. Griffith, leading to roles in groundbreaking silent films such as The Birth of a Nation and Intolerance. These early experiences not only launched her career, but also solidified her status as one of the leading actresses of the silent film era. In a film called Way Down East, there was a tragic incident after its premiere. Robert Herron, a regular actor in D.W. Griffith's films, shot himself under mysterious circumstances. Heron had hopes of becoming a director, but lost leading roles to Richard Barthelmus. Although there are conflicting reports about whether it was a suicide attempt or an accident, Heron denied trying to end his life before he passed away. Later, in The White Sister, Jish got involved due to Barthelmus, with whom she had previously worked. Despite a lucrative offer from Tiffany Pictures, Jish chose a lower paying deal with Inspiration Pictures. This decision was based on her belief in the film's potential and the opportunity for profit sharing. This move turned out to be financially wise as Inspiration Pictures had acquired the rights to the novel for a fraction of the offer from Tiffany Pictures. In her memoirs, she recalled the simplicity of craft service during silent film days. The box lunches contained a cheese sandwich, a hard boiled egg, a piece of fruit, and a half pint of milk. She mentioned living on those box lunches for so long that she couldn't eat a sandwich to this day. Playing Mimi in La Bohème, she clashed with costume designer Erte over costume designs. She refused to wear a corset he designed and insisted on silk instead of cotton. His refusal to meet her demands contributed to his short-lived career in Hollywood. Despite ongoing criticism of The Birth of a Nation, she vehemently denied its racist nature until her death. The film's glorification of the Ku Klux Klan sparked controversy that persisted throughout her life. In a pivotal role as Angela Chiremont in The White Sister, she took a proactive stance in ensuring the film's success. Together with Henry King, she scouted talents at a theater where they discovered Ronald Coleman. Following a swift screen test, Coleman was promptly enlisted for the film. Departing for Naples aboard the SS Providence, a crew of 24 set sail, intending to augment their team with local talent upon arrival. At the time of her passing, she was less than eight months shy of reaching the centenarian milestone. In the wind, she portrayed Letty, a role she chose with Lars Hansen and Victor Escherstrom. MGM's production chief, Irving Thalberg, afforded her this opportunity, underscoring her standing as a star at the studio. After her amicable parting with D.W. Griffith, she joined MGM in 1925. However, she faced an abrupt exit when Greta Garbo emerged as a star. Considered a sexless antique, she shifted her focus to radio and her first love, the theater. Ironically, MGM had Garbo on the set of The Scarlet Letter every day to watch her work as part of her apprenticeship. At her 1984 AF I Life Achievement Award ceremony, John Houseman revealed an interesting anecdote. She and her sister Dorothy Gish were offered the chance to buy the Sunset Strip for $300. Opting for a different path, they chose to spend the money on two dresses at the fashionable Bullock's department store instead. Additionally, she had a notable connection to us President Zachary Taylor through her mother's side. This familial tie added an intriguing layer to her background. In summary, Lillian Gish navigated the changing tides of the film industry, transitioning to radio and theater after her time with MGM. Her choices and experiences, both professional and personal, reflect a resilient and adaptable spirit. In a memorable scene from a classic film, the actor faced a tough moment. Her hair froze and broke while she hung in icy waters, making a scene that people still remember today. 
This incident shows how much she was willing to endure for her work. It left her hand in pain for a long time, reminding her of the toll acting can take. Born into a famous family on October 14, she followed in her relatives' footsteps and became an actress. Despite the challenges she encountered while filming, she remained dedicated to her craft. Every year on her birthday, a museum in New York shows her movies to honor her. This event is a fitting way to remember the impact she had on the movie industry. Her work continues to amaze people, even years after she stopped acting. Looking back, her time in the movie business was full of hard work and determination. The freezing hair and sore hand weren't just obstacles. They showed how committed she was to giving great performances. Her story isn't just a part of movie history. It's a tale of perseverance, talent, and a love for storytelling. Exploring the life of a talented actress and her surprising skills, the narrative unveils a story of lifelong bonds, unexpected talents, and hidden facets. Throughout her life, the actress maintained strong connections with her sister and a close friend. Opting for a life without marriage or children, she showed her affection in a unique way by sending gold christening rings whenever a baby girl was named after her. In a departure from her usual roles, the actress surprised director John Huston during the filming of a movie by displaying unexpected prowess and marksmanship. Despite being taken aback by her skill, Huston discovered that she had acquired these abilities from a notorious Western outlaw early in her career. This revelation shed light on a different aspect of the actress's past, showcasing her journey from a budding actress to a proficient shooter. In the realm of classic cinema, there's a captivating tale of a renowned actress whose performance in a particular movie earned her an Oscar nomination, a rare feat in her extensive career. Additionally, there's an intriguing incident surrounding a screening event organized by a film historian involving an old version of a famous film and potential legal issues which were deftly handled with the help of the actress. Later on, this legendary figure received a prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute, highlighting her significant influence on the movie industry. It's a story that reflects the timeless charm and impact of cinema's golden era. In the world of classic cinema, there was a versatile actor who took on diverse roles, showcasing their talent in various settings. One notable instance involved a movie where they starred alongside another actor who spoke a different language, adding an intriguing dynamic to the scenes. Another film featured a remarkable ensemble cast, including Oscar winners and nominees, highlighting their ability to collaborate with top talents in the industry. In a different production, this actor portrayed a character with a significant age difference from their co-star, demonstrating their versatility in embodying different roles. These examples illustrate the actor's remarkable career and lasting influence on the film industry. Of English, French, and German heritage, she emerged as a significant figure in the early days of cinema. Seven of her films were honored by the Library of Congress, recognized for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic importance. Among these were The Musketeers of Pig Alley, The Birth of a Nation, Intolerance, and Broken Blossoms. Her friendship with Mary Pickford, though warm, carried a hint of superstition. Mary, fearing the old adage that the good die young, was wary of being alone with her. This cautious bond reflected a bygone era of superstition and friendship in the world of Hollywood. Throughout her extensive career, which lasted for an incredible 75 years, she made a lasting impact on the world of cinema. From her very first role in a movie called An Unseen Enemy back in 1912 to her final appearance in The Whales of August in 1987, her influence was felt far and wide. In one particular film, The White Sister, she threw herself into every aspect of the production, from acting to behind-the-scenes work. The movie was shot in various locations, including Algeria for the desert scenes. She even endured a grueling 25-hour shoot with minimal breaks during a crucial scene. Despite the challenges, the film exceeded expectations, thanks in no small part to her dedication. Even as she grew older, her passion for acting never waned. In a scene for Woody Allen's Zelig, she boldly directed the renowned cinematographer Gordon Willis to achieve the perfect lighting, demonstrating her unwavering commitment to excellence. Her impact on the film industry cannot be overstated, and her legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors and filmmakers to this day. In a tale of unexpected skills and surprising connections, a legendary figure from the silver screen displayed remarkable versatility. She not only excelled in acting, but also surprised many with her prowess in shooting. This remarkable individual, known for her roles in historical dramas and silent films, left behind an estate worth millions, a fortune inherited by another iconic actress. Just 18 days after her passing, the inheritor followed suit, marking a poignant sequence of events. 
Her journey into marksmanship took an intriguing turn when she received lessons from an infamous outlaw, a man with a checkered past and train robbery. When Hollywood legends took her under their wing to hone her shooting skills for a movie, they were taken aback by her accuracy and speed, surpassing even their own proficiency. Her unexpected talent with firearms cultivated over the years added another layer to her already captivating persona. The unexpected proficiency with a gun, nurtured by unlikely mentors and refined in the company of industry greats, became a fascinating aspect of her legacy. It's a testament to the surprises hidden beneath the surface of even the most well-known personalities in the entertainment world. In the world of music, inspiration often comes from unexpected places. For instance, when a certain rock band was searching for a name for their debut album, they looked beyond their own genre. They found it in the legacy of a remarkable individual who had left her mark not just in acting, but also in other areas. She had connections that stretched far beyond the silver screen. For example, she was delighted to be invited to the White House by President Warren G. Harding, showcasing the blend of her work with politics. This invitation came after the premiere of a significant movie in 1921. Even in death, she remained close to her family, finding her final resting place beside her sister in New York City. Their bond was unbreakable, symbolizing a journey that had left an indelible mark on American cinema. During a pivotal moment in American history, as the nation grappled with the decision of whether to intervene in World War II, one individual stood firm in an anti-war stance. Originally part of the America First Committee, this person, like 40% of fellow citizens, opposed the idea of the United States joining the conflict. Their conviction arose from first-hand experience filming Hearts of the World, a World War I propaganda film shot in wartime France. Witnessing the devastating consequences of the Great War, they adamantly opposed any form of warfare. Resigning from the committee before Pearl Harbor, this individual expressed their anti-war sentiment with a resolute statement, if I could save one American life and ruin my career in doing so, I would consider my career well lost. Despite the changing tide after the declaration of war, fellow actress Mary Pickford defended their principal stand against war. Later in their career, this person took on memorable roles that showcased versatility. In The Night of the Hunter, they portrayed Rachel Cooper, selected for the role to revive the audience's engagement in movies. The director, Charles Lawton, aimed to break the trend of slouching viewers with their presence, stating, I want them to sit up straight again. In The Scarlet Letter, their star power at MGM allowed them to choose the director, Victor Escherström, and leading man, Lars Hansen, both from Sweden. Believing that the Swedish people would better understand the Puritans portrayed in the film, this unique collaboration resulted in a compelling rendition of Hester Prynne, showcasing their influence not only as an actor, but also as a decision maker in their projects. These aspects of their career reflect a commitment to principles and a willingness to shape roles to engage audiences, from taking a stand against war to influencing the audience experience in cinema. In the early days of American Mutoscope and Biograph, two sisters found themselves immersed in the world of cinema under the guidance of an experienced director. In their first film, the director initially thought they were identical twins. To make them stand out, he cleverly gave one sister red ribbons and the other striking blue ones. As they filmed, these ribbons became the director's secret code for specific instructions to each sister. This added a unique touch to their performances, making the audience's experience more interesting. One sister later mentioned her challenging role in The Wind, a film that showcased her versatility and made a lasting impact on the industry. In 1999, a respected film institute honored her as one of the 50 greatest American female screen legends, solidifying her status as a trailblazer in the film world. These stories highlight her significant contributions to cinema, showing how her performances continue to inspire filmmakers and actors. In the history of film, her influence remains strong, leaving a lasting impression that goes beyond the silver screen. Admiration for director D.W. Griffith was profound for Lillian Gish, who maintained respect for him until her passing in 1993, consistently addressing him as Mr. Griffith. Despite controversy over her role in The Birth of a Nation, her loyalty to Griffith never wavered. In May 2019, the Dorothy and Lillian Gish Film Theater at Bowling Green State University oh, underwent a significant change becoming the BGSU Film Theater due to objections regarding her involvement in the film. While filming way down east, Gish faced tough challenges that showcased her commitment to acting. A particularly memorable scene required her to lie on a slab of ice in a river for hours. Enduring freezing conditions, one of her hands stayed in icy water for an extended period, resulting in permanent nerve damage to her wrist. 
Lillian Drish's impact on film history remains noteworthy despite controversies. Her dedication to the craft is studied and celebrated, reminding us of the challenges involved in achieving cinematic excellence. This narrative, filled with both successes and difficulties, underscores her lasting influence on the industry, proving that talent and commitment leave a lasting mark. In the story of the Daughters of the American Revolution, there was a woman who made a big impact in movies. She and her sister had an idea for a movie called The Two Orphans. Even though she planned to play one character, she ended up playing another. Her sister Dorothy took the role she originally wanted. Despite often playing roles where she seemed weak, it was Dorothy who had a lot of energy off camera. While filming another movie called La Bohine, she and her co-star John Gilbert had a special connection. He liked her a lot, and sometimes he would do things to make scenes more interesting. This made their acting together seem very real and made people really interested in their performances. She really loved being in movies because she was good at it. She made movies better with her acting and ideas, and people will always remember her for that. In her career, she took on diverse roles, including Angela Chiremont in The White Sister and Hester Prynne in The Scarlet Letter. The White Sister, despite her initial doubts, turned out to be a hit. For her next project, she ventured to Italy again, starring in an adaptation of George Eliot's Romola. This film, directed by Henry King, also featured her sister Dorothy Gish. Once, she signed an 8mm copy of her film, The Battle of Elderbush Gulch, for a young filmmaker named Harry McDavid. Her Puritan costume from The Scarlet Letter found its place in the Crocker Museum in Hollywood. This museum, established by actor Harry Crocker around 1928, was dedicated to props and artifacts from American films. It stood on Sunset BLVD. In The Scarlet Letter, she faced a personal crisis when her mother suffered a stroke in London. Urged by her sister, she hastened back to London. Despite the urgency, the director adjusted the shooting schedule to accommodate her needs. The crew worked tirelessly to finish filming in record time, allowing her to catch the earliest train to New York. Years later, on June 11, 1976, a theater was dedicated to her and her sister Dorothy at Bowling Green State University in Ohio. Ronald Coleman, her co-star in The White Sister, began his journey to fame in theater before finding success in Hollywood. He joined Lillian Gish in the film after catching the eye of a director during a Broadway production. The success of The White Sister marked the beginning of his Hollywood career. In an iconic movie about ancient times, she played a small role as someone watching a chariot race. Some big-name actors like John Barrymore and Joan Crawford also played minor parts in the film. Interestingly, many actors who later became famous had small roles in the background too. She was one of them, along with her sister Dorothy Gish. Even though she acted in many movies, none of them were ever up for the top award. Once, when she was in Italy, she got to meet Benito Mussolini, who she admired a lot. This meeting shows that she had interests beyond just acting. She was a person with many sides to her personality and a lot of different experiences, 